Hey everybody, how's it going? It's me, Stephen Falking. That's not my real name, of course, but that's the name of this channel. I thought I'd do one more video here on a personal vlog level, um, talking about what one of my favorite subjects is these days, and that is the dissolution of the left. So this channel is really about me expressing some of my political thoughts um, on video, making videos about it, and um, I thought, what the heck, I've got the time today. A couple of weeks ago, um, somebody posted a video to one of the groups I'm a member of, and um, I checked out the video, and it, it's on, a, on an issue right now that's kind of, um, you know, old news, which is forced to vote. Uh, but this guy had, a you know, the usual liberal position on force to vote, which is that it's not good uh, if Jimmy Dore is involved. And um, before I get that, I think how this time, before I play you some of that audio from the video that he made and he put on YouTube, I thought I would talk a little bit about what I'm getting at when I say the dissolution of the left, because a lot of people are talking about leftist infighting or infighting on the left or among progressives or whatever. Uh, the reality is that two things happened once Bernie bowed out and we knew that we weren't getting Bernie in 2021. The first is that a lot of people who were very progressive became basically liberals. They became garden variety liberals, in my view, they became extremely partisan and extremely focused on Trump and the Republicans as being extremely bad. And they needed to do that in order to justify voting for Biden, who they didn't really like. And that continues to this day. I've got friends out there who, uh, despite the fact that Joe Biden is already, I don't know, a third of the way into his first 100 days. That's where he has to produce most of his legislation if he wants to change. Um, if he wants to change the ship of state's course, he's got to do it now. And he's already wasted a third of his time and a great deal of his political capital doing nothing other than uh, bombing Syria and tapering down expectations and trying, of course, to get rid of minimum wage uh, increases because he doesn't want that. Um, so there was this big, big problem on, on the left because a lot of people who were progressive and critical of the Democratic Party and corporate Democrats and the establishment basically just caved and said, you know what, whatever, as long as it's not Trump, as long as it's not, whatever, Ted Cruz or one of those people. I hate Fox News. I don't care. I am not going to rebel against the Democratic Party. Um, I'm going to do whatever the soccer moms tell me to do. Uh, I'm going to hold my nose and vote for Biden. But then that means that those people are psychologically invested in Biden. And it means basically that they turned from progressives back into just garden variety liberals. The second thing that happened is a lot of people uh, decided that they weren't going to be Democrats anymore, that they were going to be fill-in-the-blank kind of leftist, Trotskyite, Posadist, um, Marxist-Leninist, Maoist, uh, and anarchist, and other things. And they decided, you know what, um, I may or may not return to the Democratic Party, but I uh, my way is better, and Vladimir Lenin uh, sure showed us the way, and Stalin wasn't such a bad guy, and this kind of thing. And that's the second thing that happened to the left. And so, and w what the force the vote showed was not only is there a real splintering on the left, but the establishment progressives, the, the Justice Democrats, and those people in the house, the squad, as it were, and some of the people related to the squad, are really either 
there's really only two interpretations. Either they're powerless or they're chicken. Maybe maybe you could say, I don't want to get into the psychology of what's going on just yet. Or maybe they're never, never on your side. I mean, I don't know. That remains to be seen or rather talked about in further videos. I don't really like speculating as to motives, but I will say this. Force to vote did show that things aren't really going well on the left and that the politicians that are supposed to be on the left cannot adequately warn or block bailouts to the billionaires and to Wall Street. Um, they can't even bring Medicare for all to a vote on the House, and they certainly am not, they're not going to bring it to a vote on the House for the next two years because they have even less Democrats to work with. So uh, I thought I would play you this video of this guy that made this this video basically um, calling Brianna Joy Gray BJG, calling her a liar. See if you can listen to this. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little surprised um, by it. So, yeah, you're obviously referring to this effort to force a floor of vote for Medicare for All. It's an idea that started percolating about two weeks ago uh, when Jamie Dore brought it up on his show. About a week later, Sam Cedar said that he thought it was also a good idea, which drew my attention to it because those... Okay, now, first lie. Brianna Joy Gray is becoming a very deceptive person. You know, when right-wingers lie, they often rely on conspiracy theories. It's a kind of ethical alibi. Because if they lose the argument, all they have to do is sit there and say, George Soros controls everything. And you could just sit there and say, well, maybe they're lying about that, about believing that. Or maybe they're mentally ill, or maybe they're just some anti-Semitic waterhead. Either way, they have an ethical alibi. Brianna Joy Gray knows she's lying right now. Sam Cedar never said that he agreed with, force, with forcing a floor vote on Medicare for All. He agreed with leveraging a vote for Pelosi for something. And he agreed with AOC's position, which is we should f use that leverage to get rid of Pago. All right, so he goes on from there and he makes a lot of disparaging comments about the left. Uh, so first of all, what is Pago? Pago is absolutely nothing because what Pago is supposed to be is it's supposed to say... You can't introduce um, Medicare for All unless you have a way to pay for it. And as we all know, anybody who watched the campaign in 2020, or for that matter, in the preceding years, if you watched Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders had more than one way to pay for it. Jayapal's bill has a way to pay for it. No one, no one is proposing... Medicare for all as simply spending. Everyone has a mechanism to pay for it, whether it's a financial services tax, or I should say transactions tax, or whether it's raising income tax or a wealth tax, or whatever it may be, military cuts. That's something that um, Elizabeth Warren proposed. That's another kettle of fish, but she proposed it. Um, and Pago simply says that you either have to pay for it by raising revenues or you have to cut something else. And there's no such thing as Medicare for All that doesn't do any of those two options. So it doesn't exist. So the idea that you wouldn't... And, and also, why do you even worry about Pago? Because if you don't have the votes to pass it and you've decided that you're not going to bring it to the floor because you don't have the votes and you certainly are not going to have the votes in the next two to four years because you probably are not going to win more seats in in the midterms and if you do it won't be by a big amount so basically you're not going to bring it to a vote at all for the next four years what is the point of even being worried about pago that's why nancy pelosi gave in because she knows it's nothing 
It's just a chip that politicians can say to their constituency like you to get you to argue with someone like me. That's really what it is. As for the idea that Brianna Joy Gray was lying, though no, it wasn't a lie because when anybody can look the debate up, when Sam Cedar went on to debate her on uh, her podcast, he, he said that he changed his mind. So therefore, he actually had that position to begin with. That's not made up. I actually saw something about that from him because I do occasionally watch Sam Cedar. So you're just simply wrong. And the thing is, because you are annoyed on an emotional level, and because most, well, most people make their political decisions really based on emotions, but because you did, you decided to call her um, a liar. And that's, I don't know what that is. That's just, that's almost unforgivable. But it just goes to show how this person who might actually be a, a, a decent voter, might actually be a potential ally, is off doing the business of the bad guys, the corporations and the corporate Democrats and helping the right with this. I mean, there are all kinds of issues, of course, involving Jimmy Dore and forced to vote, involving mostly Jimmy Dore. I don't agree with everything he says, but he was undoubtedly, undoubtedly correct here. It's not even close. It's not even close. Okay. So, um, and we know, we know he was correct because that's more or less the idea that even Cenk Uger tried to use to get a $15 minimum wage vote in the Senate just recently. So if you don't call on your politicians to work for you, then you will be a slave uh, to the politicians. Anyway, that's all for now. I'll talk to you guys later in the next video. Thank you for watching.